at the farm. I want to give you a little insight into our tuber harvesting. This is step one. So once we've had a nice hard frost, we can now do our mowing off. So the day before or the day of is when we cut the plants off. We don't want to do it ahead of time as we don't want them to fill with water. So as he comes by on this first pass, he's going backwards so that he mows off the plant. So you can take a quick peek here. He will make a second pass in a moment where he actually goes back over forwards and cuts the plants again. So we're gonna let uh, you see what he's doing So you've seen step one now where we do the mowing backwards so that we're not running over and crushing the plants first. So we're going to mow backwards and we're going to come back and do step two in just a moment, which I'll get to show you. But the reason we don't cut the plants off early in the season is because they have hollow stalks. So if you cut this off early in the season, this is going to fill with water or have a chance of rotting out and the rot will continue down the stalk. So really important that you wait to cut your plants off till the day of uh, digging or the day before digging, but not weeks in advance. So here he comes on pass number two. So now this time he's gonna be mowing in the forward uh, direction, just trying to get these stalks down exactly to ground level. And then we'll get to watch the third step and the third step will be called cutting away. So we'll come back and do that here shortly uh, once we move to that, but I'll give you a little view of him doing the second pass on the mowing. It is a very frosty morning out. If you see our ground, you can see that we are frozen at the moment. So we'll definitely be waiting to dig later today once the temperatures and the ground warms up a little. as you can see, and breaking up any other laterals or stalks that are still left on there, making it a little cleaner for when we dig. All of the old branches, the frozen plants that have been mulched off or mown off at this point will be mulched into the soil. So we don't worry about cleaning up all of the dead stalks. They're gonna be used for fertilizer for next year's growth. So don't be afraid to just leave those and use those either as protection in your um, ground for your tubers if you're leaving them in the ground and have that option in your climate or just letting them decompose and uh, work back into your soil for next season. one row at a time and one variety at a time never to have 
have mixed up. So once the clumps have come out of the ground, we're using kind of just a little uh, wood, very primitive chunk of wood to tap the dirt off. We are very lucky to have very, very, very sandy soil that does fall off for the most part as we tap the clumps and go along. So each clump as it comes out of the digger is set on the ground. Then it is manually uh, knocked dirt off each one. And then shortly hereafter, they'll be put into the boxes um, to get ready to be brought into the storage rooms. So once the tubers have come up out of the ground using the digger, they are now taking out loppers and cutting back those stalks. to get ready for our washing procedure or storage. They might sit in storage for a few months. They might sit, sit in storage just a few hours before they head to the washing. But they, so we talk about tuber size being that they come in all different sizes and shapes. And that's very true. As you're gonna see, we are digging the variety next over, which is a different variety. This for instance is sheer heaven. And it makes a nice clump, nothing over huge in size, I should say. Um, but it makes a nice clump. Not every tuber is going to have an eye. Remember that there is only so many eyes to a clump. Even if it has 20 tubers, it might only have five eyes. It also might have five eyes and 10 tubers or 10 eyes and five tubers. So just remember the eyes can be tucked in here anywhere throughout that, but they all will be on last year's stock. Just in comparison, so this is a variety called Sheer Heaven. And as we move across here, we're just bringing up another variety. And this is Cooper Blaine. Obviously that clump didn't provide a lot. It looks like it broke off or rotted out a little bit. You do see a little bit of worms there. That's just because the worms were attracted to the rot. They are not actually causing the rot. So as we move along here, here's a nice big clump of Cooper Blaine, which is much more normal of what you would see for this variety. But you can see that the size and shape of the tubers is completely different. So it's really important not to judge your tubers by size, by shape, because each variety makes such a different looking tuber. So right now we're going to go ahead and pick up the tubers and take them in to get ready for storage. They're all stacked again. They have wire bottoms to go through our washer, which we'll show you shortly. But he's going to stack these up nice and tight and high and be taken in for storage. So you can see the tubers get touched by many people in our digging process, which is way before they even get to the dividing stage. None of this can really be done by a machine by itself. It does take a lot of humans. Some people think that it would be very quick and easy to dig dahlia tubers, but they are tricky since every clump looks different, is a little different size. We have to adjust. Um, some tubers and clumps are very long, where some are much more like a ball. So it's really important that we do this very carefully with a lot of hands touching the tubers to make sure that they're processed properly. So these have come in now from the field. They will get labeled with the variety number on them here shortly, and they will get taken off the trailer and into our storage room. As we talked, they have about 93 to 95% humidity. So they may stay in there 
there for just a day or hours or even a few months before they get washed and then divided. So we will wash the day before we plan to divide that variety or that palette. Some of you may recognize this ramp if you've ever been to our annual Dahlia Festival. We weren't able to have it again this year just due to COVID, but at least we do get full use out of this room and you'll kind of get to see it at a different stage. Throughout the winter, it is our storage room. And as you come down here, you're gonna see that the pallets are all lining the room with their variety tags on them. They are not in any packing medium just because of the high humidity. We do have fans running, keeping the air circulating down here. But they will then be moved up. And these look like they have been washed. So these guys were washed uh, yesterday and are most likely headed to the cutting room today. So we wash the day before we plan to divide and no further, just since we don't want any extra moisture just sitting on them. So again, these rooms are dirt floor, cement walled, and stay at about 42 to 44 degrees. And they stay at a humidity of about 93 to 95% humidity. So we don't get the shriveling or the dehydration that some of you struggle with. I am Heather with Swan Island Dahlias and we hope you have learned so much about how we dig our dahlias here on our farm as we are a family run business and have been in business for over 90 years. And P.S. This is Nicholas Gitz, the owner who has been on the farm since age 12, who is now still working to this day and probably forever will as he has a love of the dahlias just as many of you do.